In this next video, I'm going to try to help you identify and locate connective tissues. The first tissue that you'll identify is adipose tissue, and you can find adipose tissue on the adrenal gland on slide Y. When searching for adipose tissue, look on the edge of the specimen, and what you're looking for is a honeycomb pattern shown here under low power. Taking a closer look at adipose tissue under high power, you can see the honeycomb pattern arrangement of the cells. The white area that you see within the cell is where adipose or fat would be stored. And because adipose takes up most of the area within the cell, the nucleus is pushed up against the cell membrane. Next, we're gonna take a look at dense irregular connective tissue which you can find by looking at the skin on slide N. In a previous video while looking at the skin, we studied stratified squamous keratinized epithelial tissue. Underneath the stratified squamous keratinized epithelial tissue is dense irregular connective tissue, which is in a light brown pink shown here. Taking a closer look at dense irregular connective tissue in pink shown here. You can see that the fibers are tightly packed with one another, hence the word dense in the name. And you can also see that the fibers are not running in parallel. They're actually running in different directions, which is why we also call this an irregular connective tissue. Under low power, what you see here is hyaline cartilage. You can find hyaline cartilage on slide D. Taking a closer look at hyaline cartilage under low power, you can see that hyaline cartilage is made up of cartilage cells called chondrocytes, which are shown in purple here. The next connective tissue that you see here under low power is bone. Bone can be found on slide F. Taking a closer look at bone under high power, you can see the many different structures of bone. First, you have the haversian canal or central canal, which is where the blood vessels will pass through, followed by the lamella, which is the ring of bone produced by the osteocytes, and then the osteocytes, which are the bone cells, which are the black specks that you see here, and finally, the canaliculi, which means tiny little canals. These tiny little canals connect the haversian canal or the central canal to the osteocytes and its function is to transport nutrients and waste back and forth between the two structures. Collectively, all of these structures form the osteon of bone. And finally, the last connective tissue that you have to identify is blood. And blood is the only liquid connective tissue found in the body. Now, although this slide may look or appear that it has nothing on it, in actuality it does, it has blood. So the tiny purple dots that you see, those would be white blood cells. You can kind of see a faint splotchiness of light purple. Those would be the red blood cells. And the ones you probably will not be able to see from this view are platelets. You can identify the cells of blood from the blood smear on slide G. When looking at blood under high power, scan the blood smear and find a representative sample so that you can see the three types of blood cells. The first blood cell is a platelet, which looks like tiny fragmented pieces. And the function of a platelet is to help control bleeding. The next blood cell is a white blood cell, which is this purple spherical structure you see here. The function of the white blood cell is to protect the body against pathogens. And finally, the last blood cell is the red blood cell, which look like tiny little O's you see here. The function of the red blood cell is to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide between systems and tissues. What's also shown here is the space between the cells. This space is filled with a fluid called plasma.